Hello everyone, and welcome to this video. Now, tis the season for giving, and I'm going to be giving you a tutorial on how to use doors. Now, this is intended to be a very basic beginner level tutorial on doors, so if you are adept with this game, with Stormworks, you probably don't have to watch this, but you can watch this if you do want, so you can maybe learn something or just for entertainment value. Regardless, we're going to be looking at all the various types of doors that you can make in Stormworks. We're going to be going through what they can do, the functionality, and how to operate them. Drop a comment in the, in the section below if you have other tutorial video requests. We are also going to be covering other tutorial topics in the future, intermediate and beginner topics. So, without further ado, and with these beautiful decorations above us, let's begin. So, all I did is I lined up on this plate all the doors that you can find in the game in the workbench when you go here and you search up door you get all these different things so I'm going to explain how you can operate them and what exactly they are but first before we do that I'm just going to show you a step-by-step -step how the how each door works so th these ones are your most basic type of door you don't have to do anything with them they are not powered by electrical anything they're just there they do have one input and that is to lock them so you can see that i'm hovering over it it says lock is true and if i press e i cannot open it if i turn this off i can now a nice thing the developers added is if you lock a door while it's open you still could close it but then not open it previously they'd be stuck in the open position so these ones just have lock buttons so they prevent you from opening them otherwise very self-explanatory you have to use these doors if you want to seal off your build watch my other tutorial video for how to start off in stormworks and i kind of explained that each build has to be sealed off in order for water not to get into it now there are times when that doesn't matter and i will explain that later on but for every ship, you probably want to seal off the compartment just like this. So these four are the most basic doors. Now, the next two are our sliding door electric and sliding hatch electric. So these ones have to have electricity. So you see, I've attached it to the battery behind it. And if you press this button, it opens. Likewise, you press this button, it opens. You close it like that. So this is just a simple toggle button attached to these doors. And they open and close obviously you can cut power to this button and prevent it from opening but if you cut power to the door that door is just going to flop around so you don't cut power to it to lock it now here we have a door using a pivot but keep in mind this door does not function as a sealed compartment so you can use this in a car or in a helicopter something that does not require you to seal off that compartment but you cannot close off a compartment like this. And I'll go into more detail on that. Over here, we have a proper sealed custom door that uses the same technique as this, except it's actually sealed, which is nice for ships and things, submarines. Over here, we have the hinge dock door and the hinge to dock hatch. Now, these ones open the same way as these guys here with the extra that they have a magnet function on their edge. So these doors are actually a little more intricate. They're used for docking your ship to other ships and that type of thing, expanding your ship by using this magnet that is located on the door. So when we go back to the workbench here, we're just gonna spawn up a little work area that I can demonstrate how the different things work. So. I probably don't really have to go into these ones as much, but I will say they're as simple as typing in door, placing it down, and that's it. If you want to add a locking function, you can put a toggle button. That's this one. So toggle button, and you can have it attached first to the battery and second to the only connector on the door, which is the lock. And that's how you lock it. So that's what I did back there for these first four doors right here. One, two, three, and four. So these ones all use that exact same type of system that I just showed you here. And they're very basic. They just have the button and the single input. 
Now, these next doors, the sliding ones, they are a bit more intricate because they require you to actually have a button that makes them function. These doors will function without buttons. So you don't actually have to lock them. That's your choice. Whereas these ones will not function unless you have electricity and unless you have a button. So I'm going to show you something here. We're going to put a breaker right here. And I'm going to attach this breaker to the battery and I'm going to attach this breaker to the door. And we're going to put it in the on position. And then I'm going to have two buttons, one for each door again, attached to the battery and attached to the door of course and we're going to put this to be here and this to be here now note there are no other nodes going through these doors so it's literally just the single open close hatch and in this case i put a breaker to go through and actually just for demonstration purposes i will attach also this one to this breaker as well and not to here so both of them are on that breaker so if we spawn it in the game here you can see you press this button these ones open up nicely and they have 100% electrical. But note, as soon as you turn this off, I had infinite electric on. So, as soon as you turn, so you have these working like this, as soon as you turn this off, these doors no longer function. Like, they, not only can you not open them, but you can, like, push through them, walk through them, like, they just, like, you can shove them open with your character, so they're not useless or dangerous in a ship's setting, but they no longer operate. Even if your buttons have electrical power, these ones don't, so they have to be connected to electricity. That's what I was saying. You can't lock these doors by just cutting power to them, because if you cut power to them, they will just flop open. But you can cut power to the buttons that open them, and then you won't be able to open the doors. So that's how you'd lock these ones. Back to the drawing board here. So we'll delete these ones and delete all this. And I'm just going to color these green because we covered them. Now onto our doors using the um, numerical switch box. So we have two types of doors here. And I was talking about the sealed compartments. So if what I meant by that is... If you have a compartment that wants to say hold water or something, and again, this is a beginner tutorial, maybe you already know this, maybe not, but we're just going to explain the basics of the game here as well. So a very simple water reservoir, let's call it here. And we're going to put a, put a spawner inside with fluid. So that fluid spawner there, and we'll put fresh water. So, in this case, if you put a uh, volume node or liquid meter here and then close this off with a door, we could even put a hatch just for fun. I did delete that piece that I just put there, but that was not intentional. We'll just do that like this and we have the spawner or rather the liquid meter and we'll put it right underneath the door for debug purposes and even on this side we'll throw in a window so we could see exactly what's going on here so in the world of stormworks this is a sealed compartment there is currently 1700 liters of liquid inside you could see the liquid through this window kind of and if you open this door that liquid should come out. Clearly it's a bug right now. Um, but this is a sealed compartment. I'm a little baffled at that, but anyway, they're hopefully going to fix that in the future. So what you have here in front of you, this one would not create a sealed environment because you have two separate bodies and they're not attached with the proper, call it edge piece. So these ones do not, this one does not create a sealed door. So this is something you could use, like I said, in a helicopter or a car, something that does not go underwater. This is fine. This one you have to use if you want to create a sealed compartment. Both of them have pretty much the same function or same feature. The difference is one of them uses this compact robotic pivot piece. So we're just going to put that there. 
and the other one uses the door frame piece. So first, I'm going to start by building this one here. First things first, you want to make the door frame, or like you'd have a wall or some type of thing. So as such, you get yourself a wall, and you have this. Now, you'd want to delete everything and delete this because this is going to be our opening. Now you have to know how bodies works. So right now everything is on the ground body. This is a different body. And that's why when you press on it, everything else goes grayscale. So you'll want to attach it to this and I'm just going to show it using a different color. We're going to attach everything to here and we're going to attach this on the bottom as well like that. So now we got two different, very clear bodies on this door. And we could even put, like I did here, put a little window on it. And you obviously need to have a button. In this case, we're just going to use a simple toggle button. And that is the basis of your door. Like I said, this is something you want to use in a helicopter or in a car or a truck or a plane, something that does not go underwater. You have to attach these things to the battery, but there is nowhere for you to attach this toggle button to this pivot. So for that reason, you need a numerical switch box, and that looks just like this. So you put your numerical switch box on the ground, your door button attaches to this, and your pivot button attaches to the switched value. Now what's important is the on and off button, or values. So the off value is when this button is not pressed, and that can be zero, so you don't have to put anything on it. But your on value, you have to put a number. So you could do a couple different things. You can put either a constant number, like this. You can put a lever. You can even put a keypad. Because that number has to come from somewhere. How much that door opens has to be, you know, derived from somewhere. So in this case, we will put it to be attached to the constant number. This is the easiest way, and you'll just put one. And if you spawn that up, you can see that when you go over here, as long as your button has a um, electricity, you're gonna open, and it's gonna open to this value, which is constant number one. If you attach it to any of these other points here, such as the um, keypad, you then have to type in a number on that keypad to get it to open. So quite simply put, you press this, nothing will happen. But if I go and add one here, it'll open. If you add 0.5 here, it'll go halfway. So this is good for testing the door, but I think for what you need, call it just a stable, usually working door or always working door, is this series, this switch box, and a constant number. Now very easy microcontroller to make for this and I'll show you the following. So I have my empty microcontroller here. You just go into this and quite simply you want two things. You want your button and you want your value. So the door value. And what I'm going to show you actually is quite neat because not only is it a small microcontroller, but it's very useful. So you do this, you take your numerical switch box, when you press the button, that do that, so very simple. Now on the on bit, what I recommend you do is actually put a value, and I'm gonna show you right here. It could be a property slider or it can just be a property number. But regardless, you put this and attach it to the on, and here you'll put open and value one and what's cool is sometimes i actually have use for a closed number and that's i'll tell you when if you spawn up a car or a truck that has a um tailgate that spawns open such as the buckle hoodoo here this button or this door actually spawns in a open position and the reason for that is because when it's open, it actually sags down even lower. So you could use it as a step. Um, so if you go here to my button microcontroller, you could see that my starting amount, my open amount is 0.4. My closed amount is negative one. So for that reason, I always like to have 
this here something you could set. So I'm just going to show you. If we do negative 0.2 or 0.3 and 1, so just like this, we put this on the door, and this here we put on the pivot. Now we don't need any of this stuff. And if we spawn this, there you go. So our opening is already point th negative 0.3 open, and if we press the button, it goes all the way to 1. And then if we close it, it goes to 0.3. So you can play around with that and set it to whatever it is you need. But this is a very, very useful microcontroller to have and make. So now that we've covered that, what I want to show you is the sealed door, which works the same way. But honestly, this was giving me a ton of confusion when I first started the game. So hopefully this will help you. You need your door frame. And then you have, so you have your door frame and then you have your door panel. So consider the following difference. The door frame is the frame into which your door panel gets placed. Now, maybe that doesn't make sense right now, but pretty much just follow the arrows. So you'll want to establish a door and size. Remember your character, your avatar is seven blocks tall. So you want your door to be probably seven. So you don't have to crouch to go through it. This is for sure overkill. And then you can do this on this piece here. So you just kind of have to make this door edge. And that's only the starting point. So remember the thing I told you about the bodies. So that's our door edge. Now you have to put a robotic door hinge. Without this, you have no door. You have no mechanism. This actually will create a sealed space. Like if we close this like this, this will be a fully sealed um, compartment because of that door opening. Like this, the game would actually see this as a room, albeit with an open door. But it wouldn't see it as this, which is nothing. Like this car, these pivots, this, as far as the game's concerned, the inside of this car is the outside of this car. Like there's no difference in temperature or pressure or anything inside of this, whereas this and this would be. Now at this point, you have a choice. You could leave it open like this and then it's going to make whatever room is on the other side open to atmosphere and water and things can get through or you could start to build your actual door now the door is going to consist of the door edge pieces or door panel pieces i think they're called but they look just like this and they're going to have these arrows on the other side so opposite of what you are currently um, having for the door frame let's call it now you have these pieces here so if you do this and then you just take regular cube pieces or a window piece you can put that here so now you have a sealed off compartment but if you go to the merge bodies you see that it's all one body which it cannot be it's not going to work as a door so you can select this and you cut and paste and now Technically, that is a door piece within a door frame. However, there's no hinge here. So if you spawn this in, you're going to see that it's going to kind of loosely fit on it. And if I run at it from this side, it just drops right out. So at this point, again, you have another choice. And that is how you're going to support or hang your door. The easiest thing to do is to use a door hinge piece at this point and pretty much you can move it into position like this and as long as the lines all match up as you see here and then the frame is the other color that is now a properly hung door where you could then add your door um, toggle button like we have here you can add your microcontroller that we made and it will open. Also, you'll probably want to select this whole door and drag it down one because now you can walk right through it without being stopped, except underneath here, like underground, that door is still there. And of course, you need to have a toggle button, most likely on both sides, I'd imagine. And you need electricity to all these things. 
and then our microcontroller that we built earlier so we have the open one closed zero and with all that being attached there you have it that would work and that this will work but one other piece that we missed or didn't put and it's optional you don't have to do this is the door frame controller now like i said this door will work and i'm just going to do a quick copy of it over here and then on this one we're going to install this controller and all you need for the controller is two pieces of straight door frame edge so right here it would work just have to flip it around until it works there you go so these doors are functionally the same the only difference is this one now has this controller and it allows you to lock the door so you could put this here and attach this to up here which is lock seal or lock seal yeah and we attach power to everything and you can even have an indicator next to the door that tells you yes the door is sealed meaning that water isn't going to come in now over here you do notice that there is a second button here that says current rotation so you actually could have a dial or a display reading out how much your door is currently open but that's not necessary so when we spawn this in here you can see that currently this door is sealed it's reading indicator true so it's sealed but as soon as i open it that does not it's not sealed so now water can come in so that's the purpose of this door frame controller also if i press this it locks it and see that you want to be very weary and careful of that because you can easily end up destroying yourself and i thought that wouldn't work to be honest but very good test to see that it does so even so if you lock your door you have this button to lock the se this seal you, your door still will want to open so in this case you'll probably want to cut power to your robotic hinge or you'll add another thing in here that is whether or not it's locked like another part here that says lock and if your lock is enabled so if it's locked then quite simply we have another numerical switch box so when it's off nothing happens but when it's locked when it's on it goes automatically to zero so in this case hopefully the thing doesn't fly out on us i don't know where it went but you see here we press this and it opens now you press this oh and we're still off because i didn't attach the lock button just goes to show you if you're not paying attention here you end up with things like this and that's what i love about the game because it's very unforgiving it's if you're not thinking with all three brain cells it will not work for you so now finally without it flying into my face and killing me again if we press this and press this nothing happens because out of our microcontroller it's telling this to stay zero and then if you unlock it it opens up this one is your basic door like i said you just have this simple microcontroller and the simple hinge but what you do have or what i did put is this value that reads our um, robotic value or how much it's open now the purpose behind that is it's good if you have kind of a series of microcontrollers feeding one another and if the doors open do something else so that is good for that but otherwise the, that's how these um these modular doors work if you choose not to have a hinged door but rather to use sort of other means then that is possible too but that requires a little bit extra work so you can for example use gravity to seal your door if you have this in a position like this and you can have something along these lines so now the way the door is positioned is it will want to pretty much fall into place here but what you can do is have it on um sort of sliding tracks or something now just take note when we spawn it in here it plops right through so what you do like i just said is 
potentially have a tracked system here like this and you could then have the door open and close for example this would be great on a ship like a, a hull system or like a, a deck um, deck storage for example probably you wouldn't want to put this here most likely you want to put this right up against the door there so then what you do is attach that and put that there and then if we just do this and there's a hole for that to go down connect this all to electricity and then even have a toggle or rather um, lever switch put it here attach the electricity attach this to this make sure this can go in the positive and the negative direction and there you have it so now if we lower this that door opens if we pull this up that door is now sealed so that would actually seal it off from the environment so there's a lot of different ways that you could use these modular doors. You can customize them to any size, any shape, put windows, put all sorts of things. But keep in mind, there's a ton of different things you can do. So we will actually cover that in a different video. But just as far as basics go, you can use the hinge method or hinge system. And then if you want to have something more fancy like this, you could do that as well. Now, if you are doing something fancy like this, I do recommend you at least put this sort of controller because it can check whether it is locked or whether it is sealed so that is also something quite useful and actually i'll show you how that works before we move on if we put our indicator and our button here and put these all to be connected to electricity so we will seal it by this and this will tell us if it is in fact sealed so right off the bat you see that it's sealed and you could press this and now it's locked in place which helps us so it's not going to drop down because if you jump on it for example or put some sort of outward pressure it's not going to just come opening in but if you release that and then do that see that that turned off but it automatically turns on once it's in the proper place if i do this and try to turn this down it kind of prevents it from leaving you can see that it like kind of jolts it but it stays locked so this is a good system and very very versatile now one disclaimer that i will put is that these doors are very graphic hungry or fps hungry so the more different bodies you have the more different colored things you have like this car for example the worse it gets for your game the more laggy your game is going to be so if you have a ship with a million doors all custom like this it will be more laggy than if you just use the pre-made doors so i would say use custom doors if and when you have to so for a garage bay for example with a huge door you'd want to use this or some type of like um door that opens with certain interactions that's also like a custom size go for it but for just standard doors my advice is to use doors like this so we've covered the first seven or eight and now we're on to the last two now in here you could see these doors are more complicated than the others they have tons of different inputs outputs received not received magnetic toggle all this stuff so i'm not going to go through everything here with you because the, the honestly these are worth their own video so the basics of doors does not really apply when it comes to these doors but what i will say you want to attach them to the electric you want to attach this button to the door open and that is how you work make them work as doors all right so while that part is clear what i do want to show you is their capability to be attached so what we'll do is delete this and place them as such we'll place one on the ground here i guess we could just do this and then we're going to take one and place it above it and flip it over like that so it's gonna fall onto it which good and like, doesn't matter this is good enough for us um, 
what I will do is do this so it kind of secures itself around it. Though this part is not necessary because what we're going to do actually is have it lock itself onto the other. And I'm going to just show you how that works. So if we put this toggle switch here and a toggle switch here, so and connect everything to the electricity real quick here, just like that. This toggle is going to open this door. This toggle is going to open this door, but we also now have to, on this side, I'm going to put the magnet. So here we're going to have magnet toggle and here we're going to have magnet toggle. Now this top door also does not have electricity. You cannot just do this. It's not even attached. So it has to have its own battery. And we're just going to put that right here. So it has to have its own battery with these components connected. And one really neat thing is you can actually have the door interact with the other door. So when you press the toggle button on the one door, the other one will also open. Now, actually, one problem I see is this door on the bottom cannot actually open properly because of the way I have it attached to the ground. So I'm just going to go ahead and raise it up a little bit on a bit of a platform, if you will. Not going to make it too realistic, but just to get my point across, that is going to impede. No, that's fine. All right. So there we go. Anyways, as I was saying here, you can have this is going to toggle our magnet. This is going to open our door, but you can now also have this piece here interact with this piece here. So you can have it when it once it's connected, the door opens. So this one on top doesn't even have to have a button. So once it's connected, so let's give that a shot. So they kind of fell on top of each other, not very nicely, mind you. And that is probably because of the battery. Yes, it is. The battery did not move and it kind of blocked our way. So we got to put this here and try that again. All right. It fell on top of it, which is good. And now we can press this. Well, first you have to connect it to electricity. So you could press this, you could press this, and you could see now, boom, it opened. Because as soon as they were connected, it opened. And then this button here opens that door. So they have these different mechanisms that you can kind of interact with one another. And I definitely recommend you play along with that a little bit more. You can pass um, composites through here. So you can actually attach, you can have multiple parts of a ship come together with this piece and it will hold it together and then it'll just open up automatically. So you can actually kind of cheat the game into making a massive ship here like this without doing like the increased sized um, workbenches and stuff. And of course you can send numbers through it. You can send on and off received. And like I said, you can attach this. So actually you could put your on off received to open the door. And then here the on off sent will come from opening this door. So if we press send on off here, then it should also open this bottom door, but that'll only work if they are connected properly. So you see that once they're connected because we opened that door or pressed this toggle, both of them opened up. So you can make like a really nice airlock system using these types of doors. I really do recommend them. And I think they're great additions to this game that just give you that much more flexibility on your creations. So thank you for all for watching this video. Hopefully you learned something about doors. It is a basic video. I do understand that. And there are more complicated parts that come with these hinged dock doors. But regardless, hopefully this gave you a basic overview of the door capabilities, how to use doors and how to play Stormworks. So thank you all for watching. Stay tuned for more videos, more content, and as always, happy Stormworksing, everyone.